presence you'll enjoy. Be at peace with the Lord today. Come, let us worship the Lord all together here today. Let us worship the Lord in His presence as we pray. He'll be there to receive you and His presence you'll enjoy. Be at peace with the Lord today. I am at peace with my Maker since He brought me here today. I'm at peace with the Lord who has washed my sins away. I'm at peace with my Savior for He filled my heart with joy. I'm at peace with the Lord today. Let's, come on, let's do this again with the piano. Praise God. And come, let us worship the Lord all together today. Let us worship the Lord in His presence as we pray. He'll be there to receive you at His presence. You'll enjoy. Be at peace with the Lord today. I am at peace with my sin. Since he brought me here today, I'm at peace with the Lord who has washed my sins away. I'm at peace with my Savior, for he filled my heart with joy. I'm at peace with the Lord today. Let's give the Lord a great big hand off and hallelujah. Oh, it tastes like honey in 
Something else when a 94-year-old goes down to take care of a 90-year-old, right? And uh, so she went down to, to be with her sister and just pray for Charlotte. And, uh, you know, we saw a miracle with Dave and Emily Yost, amen? Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, I was there when the doctor said, <clears throat> we just gonna make her comfortable or let her go. Call the boys in to say goodbye. And we saw God raise her back up, amen? Yeah. So he can, he has the final say, amen? And uh, Aunt Charlotte had a, a wonderful quality of life. She was not infirmed. And so we just, were, I want to pray. I want to speak life over my Aunt Charlotte until God says something else. Amen. Amen. So let's just speak life. Let's proclaim it. Let's Amen. proclaim her healing. She was really enjoying her life. And um, she has a unique testimony. And I'm going to believe that she's going to be able to come back and share her testimony. Yes. Because she was in bondage for 50 years. And um, and she's just been freed the last few years, and so she's got a mighty testimony. God does everything well. Sister Sister Ruthie, you're here today. Praise God. We had you on the prayer list. Sister Clucky's granddaughter. Um, pardon me. And you're well. Praise God. She's healed too. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Clucky's granddaughter. A lot of you know Marcel. She uh, comes to the women's breakfast. Well, she's, uh, she's got some legal thing going on, and she goes to court on Tuesday, and so pray for her. She's um, in, in a detention center right now. They want me to go see her tomorrow. So pray for her to have favor. She's been turning totally to the Lord, amen. I don't know any of the particulars at all. I just know that Sister Clucky is a godly woman, and she asks us to pray, and let's pray for her, amen. Uh, Sharon Gerhardt, the whole Gerhardt family got sick this last week, and they had a call in everyone yesterday to take Sharon to the hospital, and they kept her. And uh, Kevin's home, that's why we were a little delayed in getting started today. Kevin and James are home, they're not doing well either, so pray for them, amen. Uh, I will pray for uh, my, my friend uh, Steve Emerson, who's an investigative journalist. Uh, they really believe he was... Uh, a victim of a, of an attack, and he got a very rare infection. And uh, but God has sustained him. They told him he was going to die, and he's back at work. Amen. Hallelujah. So God is awesome. Is it God? Is it God? Yes. And he's strengthening him. He keeps doing miracle after miracle. So we we going to keep praying for him. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we had. I have Mary Lou on the prayer list because her tree blew over. And uh, I asked her this morning though if her she had water and she's got water back, amen. And didn't eat your house, so you're you're pretty good. Cost a little bit of money, but not too much, right? Praise the oh, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And he's got angels on every side of you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, I really want to leave Levi to meet our guest today. Well, there you go. But he's not here this morning, but uh, pray for Levi. He's still having some struggles, and so just keep him up in your prayer. Uh, I said pray for Brother Cleo. We'll keep encouragement and strength. Amen. I, I need a prayer this week. I, need, I always need prayer. I need prayer for guidance and for strength and for renewal. Uh, I need wisdom to shepherd your people. Amen? Yes. I, need to, I need stamina to, to, to work my other two jobs in Jesus' name. And uh, and I need renewed health. My health is, uh, I've been fighting it too, but praise God. He's going to heal me. I know he will. Amen. Well, praise God. Pray for, so you can read through the rest of the list. Most of them are our missionaries. We have our missionaries in. Uh, in Peru, pardon me, yeah, I'll, I didn't put Jan on you, know, I will, but I'll tell about that. We have our missionaries in Peru, we have our three schools and Bible colleges, 128 churches to pray for, uh, pray for our missionaries in Pakistan, for Pastors John and Rachel and Ariel, and for the 36 orphans they take care of, and for the crusades they're doing. Their lives are threatened every single day. And even though he has a PhD, he cannot get a job because he's a Christian. And you know, Pakistan is mainly uh, Hindu or, or Muslim. So, 
Uh, they're, they're threatened every day, and they take care of those 36 orphans. A lot of them are children or martyrs, and so, uh, and they're legitimate. They've been checked out. Uh, we're going to be getting some papers to help people understand. It costs $432 a month to feed the 36 children. We've only been able to send about half of that every month, and, and instead of complaining, they thank us that they're able to eat every other day. And so, you know, uh, they have breakfast every day and they have lunch every other day right now. So they have no other ministry support coming in. And so, and they pay for all of their crusades. And they have huge crusades in Pakistan. And lots of people coming to Jesus. People, right in front of your eyes, I saw uh, a withered hand just, just, whoo, just restored. And that leprosy or something that was on just, just disappeared right in front of your eyes. Praise God. But, um, and we've met them face to face. They are a legitimate ministry in Pakistan. Pray for them. Um, praise God. Pray for Israel to grant Jews who believe in Jesus yes. as the Messiah a right to return, just like all other Jews. Do you know that if, if you're a, if you are of Jewish descent and you are a Buddhist, you can go. You have a right to return to Israel and live there. If you are an atheist, but you're a Jew, you can go back and live in Israel. If you are Hindu or any other pagan religion, you can go back and live in Israel. Or if you are practicing Judaism, you can go back. But if you are a Christian Jew, you're not allowed to go back. And that's because of the persecution, the, the, all the crusades and the persecution of Christians killing Jews. And so they don't even consider them Jews anymore if they accept Messiah. So let's pray that as the time grows near, and we know there's persecution coming for the Jewish people even more, that God will open the door for those that believe in Messiah to return back to Israel as well. And so let's keep that in your prayers. Uh, amen. Praise God. Pardon me? Yes, Jamie Cohen. Mm -hmm. Pastor Fonda and I uh, went to a house church, and uh, Pastor Kadisha, many of you met her at Love, uh, and her husband, and Pastor B uh, Bita. They have a house church, and the whole church was full of former Muslims that had come to know Christ, you know. And so everybody there besides us and the professor from Epic Bible College had been Muslim. And they were all saved and serving Jesus, and, and yeah, and so God's doing a work in the Muslim people. He's calling, but God works on our hearts, amen. And so we need to pray too. In Peru, especially, uh, we need the Catholic Church is like our enemy. It's not like it is here. They actually, I, they come and vandalize our schools and things, and they consider it an act to help God. They go and they vandalize the schools. So pray that God would move on their hearts, amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Uh, now you know that uh, that Kenneth Smith, he came home off the mission field. They're now in Texas. And uh, but they left their church to another man. They asked for prayer. Their church is, is dwindling down. Don Matter that came and visited us from Mexico, he went home to be with the Lord right after he was with us. So we, we need to check on their missions and see how they're doing in Mexico as well. We have two others in India that we support through the Marars, through the IMA. And uh, so just keep all of these missionaries, uh, keep them in, in your heart. And we're going to hear about another mission work today. And we're going to be asking the Lord how we can uh, support that down the road as well. So can you say amen? Amen. 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 I don't usually go over a little prayer request, but oh. And you know Nick Val and, and Jan Hammond, uh, Jan, not Hammond, Jan Marshall, yes. what's her, Hanley, her maiden name is Hanley. Uh, 
her brother was missing last week, and then they found him uh, dead. And so, the very distraught family right now. And so, uh, just pray for the peace of the Holy Spirit to be upon them, and for everything, for the family to be comforted and all that stuff. You know, amen. And, and it was, it's a very disturbing situation. Amen. But we have some praise reports this week too. Let's go to Brother Ray's here with us. Amen. And hallelujah. And Tixi Cathedral is not, and Emily Yost is still improving. Hallelujah. And, and we got a good family up there yesterday. She was, they've been just in the hospital taking care of her, so they had no money to pay the bills. And so they were being evicted, and their car was going to be repossessed, so they couldn't even live in their van. And so uh, we started to go find me for them on Facebook, and and I think we raised about half of what they needed in one day. So keep praying for them. Pray that God would speak to other people to, to also put on their heart to give to them. They're faithful servants of God. You all know the Yost in the upper room. They love the Lord with all their heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. amen, amen. So praise God. Hallelujah. Now we have... Oh, go on. Traveling mercies and. And uh, Kadisha no. is going to be speaking at the Country Club of Glow on March the 11th. Oh, wonderful. Uh, but if you want to go, it's it, they do it every other month mm -hmm. because uh, at the Country Club they have to have a, have a brunch. Mm -hmm. They have to uh, and it costs twenty-five dollars for brunch. Okay. So, but if anybody would like to go, I've got the information. Okay. So, see, Dawn, if you'd like to go here, Kadisha, she's one of the pastors of the Iranian Church, the house church that children we went to. Amen. So, God is doing amazing things, and you don't always see everything He's doing, but He's doing. He's on the move. He's doing amazing things. Amen. Praise God. Um. I want to have uh, Mr. Deb come, come on up here and uh, share just a few short announcements. I'd like to call it a prayer request. I stole my thunder. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, praise God, everybody. You know, we see a lot of faces today that we haven't seen that have been out sick. Mary was out and, and Ray was out. Ruthie was out. And they're all back, so praise God. You know, God's on the move, amen. So, um, during our week, you know, um, we have Sunday school here every week at um, 9. And everybody is welcome to come to that, okay? Um, and then service starts at 10.30. Um, and then Tuesday nights, we have prayer at 6. And, the, and Bible study at 7. And Wednesday at 1.15, the Revelation Bible study is over. This week we are starting on By Divine Appointment, which was written by Dr. Noreen Jacks. And um, so that's on the feast. So that will be a real exciting teaching that we're looking forward to hearing. So um, I've been Barbara. We've been, I've been getting questions about pizza. What's the story on that? Can you? Okay. All right. So, no pizza this month. And um, we're not sure about that because we, they changed management. So, we don't know if that, that will continue. Okay. So, that's still on the block. All right. Anything else, Pastor? Okay, so that's it. If anybody has any questions, let us know. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, is our worship team ready for me?
Let's stand together if you're able. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. If you have the resurrected Jesus in you, a shout praise the Lord. Come on now. If you have the resurrected Jesus in you, shout praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we greet you all. I believe you had a very good and not so good week. Amen. But if you allow Jesus in your week, Hallelujah. I guarantee you whatever downfall you had, he will turn it around. Amen? Amen. Worse to the song says, he turns my weakness into worship. He turns my daily pressure into praise. He turns my mourning into dancing. And for all those reasons, why not praise his holy name? Amen? Amen. Don't worry if you don't know the tune or the words to the song. We have lyrics up. Praise and worship with us by clapping and singing as we warm up to worship his holy name. Amen. He turned my weakness into worship. He turned my pressure into prayer. He turned my morning into dancing. And I will bless your whole again. He turned my weakness into worship. You turn my pressure into praise. You turn my morning into dancing. And I will bless your holy name. You turn it around. You turn it around. Oh, you turn it around. Yeah, you turn it around. As we start the year, hallelujah, your prayers, your prayers is a strong support for our voices of victory. Let us get into our worship. Allow the Holy Spirit to overcome our worship this morning as we get ready to sing surely into he touched me. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Don't worry. He is here. Whatever need you have in your heart, let it go. Forget the five minutes that just have passed and prepare our worship to the Lord for he deserves it all. Heavenly Father, as you look upon your people this morning, we humble ourselves and we ask for your anointing. We ask for your presence to continue to be with us as we grace you with your worship. We grace you with your praise. Forgive us, Almighty Father, for we are humble servants of you. But look upon us as we worship you, as we sing unto you, your praises. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Thank you. 
like to eat one meal every other day. You know, and in Peru, you know, our money goes three times as far, and I'm sure in Pakistan it does too. You know, our money, you know what you may make in a month, maybe it takes someone else to make in a year. You know, we think that we don't make very much and what we give doesn't matter much. But you know, $50 would be $150 in Peru. So you know, your money goes so much further. And we just need to be faithful in everything that we do in our giving. And you know, I, I get excited to help somebody. You know, the Lord says, giving. Not just in our money, but in everything we do. But you know, Mom and I, sometimes we we go out and we'll see somebody that needs something. And, you know, we just, we get excited serving God. You know, not because we care about serving and not because we want the praise to give to somebody, but because it excites us. It excites us just as much or not more if we got it ourselves. And that's the way it should be. Father, I just thank you right now for your faithfulness to us. You know the needs that we have. You know our missionary that's here this morning. Father, we just pray that you would just help us to know what to do in everything that we do. In our finances, I ask that you would just speak us right now. Speak an amount to us, Lord Jesus, that we need to give. I know this is the fifth Saturday, of, fifth Sunday of the month, and sometimes we, we need to dig a little deeper, but help us to dig a little deeper, Father. And we just thank you in your precious name. Amen. Now, you know, I know some of you get paid the first of the month, and I, I know it's maybe on a credit card or ATM. But remember, we have a, a card, a machine here that we can honor that. And sometimes if you give today, it, you know, it won't go on the bank till probably to Tuesday. Yeah, it won't hit until Tuesday. Yeah, it won't hit until probably Tuesday. So you're okay. So I just wanted to let you know. So let's stand and let's uh, just uh, come forward and, and give your offering. Thank you so much. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, bless his wonderful name. Bless 
Collect your Bible, forget to pray, forget to pray, forget to pray, neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you shrink, 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 and you shrink, 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 and you shrink, shrink, shrink. Let your Bible forget to pray and you shrink, shrink, shrink. <laughs> okay, let's do one more big clap Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's do, one more. Let's do uh, let's do. The Lord, he told Noah to build me an arky, yucky Lord, he told Noah to build me an arky, yucky build it out of Go for barky, barky children of the Lord. Okay. The animals they came, they came by twosies, twosies, animals they came, they came by twosies, twosies. Oh, oh, but they came for twosies, twosies, children of the Lord. It's that one. The animals they came, they came by twosies, twosies, animals.
Turkey only gave birth to different many babies, like North Korea, Cuba, Venezuela, you know, this whole regime. This is atheistic country, and for many years it was um, curtain iron, it was closed community, you cannot go in or go out there, but uh, God did a miracle. Uh, it collapsed in the 90s, and since then we have like a little freedom, we call it little freedom, and um, that's why we can do a little bit of uh, evangelism, but not too much. There is some churches, um, especially on Ukraine, if you go uh, right, very right, it's uh, Ukraine, uh, where it now we have conflict, Ukraine and Russia, it's not a good situation, but we were born and raised right here in the Western Ukraine, where you can see smiling, little smiley face uh, on, the, on the very left. And I would like you to encourage to go missions, go overseas, go different locations. On this map, you can see it's a different places where we started to go from Ukraine to different parts of Russia, different smile spaces, where we would go there and go and see, uh, find a small church that already exists there and start to minister with them, to reach out, to do evangelism, discipleship. That's how we started to do with the small tiny churches that were some find, trying to find some believers who were there to reach over the gospel. And God gave us a miracle. We did lots of trips. And one time we came to uh, this one of the trips 20 years ago. We were going to different uh, uh, winter time. It's only lakes, you know, and, and frozen. When it's frozen, the river you can go there. There's no roads sometimes in Siberia. In very many places there is no roads, so we can use ice. Uh, this is like for example a river, and we go on ice. Yeah. Um, uh, so we came to the city of Ufa. It was a long time ago, 23 years ago, and God gave us miracle to see this place. It's uh, close to Kazakhstan, city of Ufa. It's a, they have lots of small uh, republics or small ethnic groups. And uh, we came as a small family with small kids. It's me and my wife, uh, many years. And we found this uh, church that was about uh, maybe maybe a hundred uh, people for a city of 1.1 million. Wow. The only evangelical wow. church. And uh, people was this is probably the most crowded. Lots of people came from different places. But it was 20 years ago. There was no young people, only older people. Uh, and the government is trying to prohibit young people to go. No Sunday school. Uh, no youth services, no outreach, no Christian education. So church will die and will never rise again. This was the political of yeah, 20 human. years ago, also the same place. And God uh, brought us back to this country. And uh, now we are there to reach Muslims. Because in this area, lots of Muslims. It's close to Kazakhstan. You can see Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmen. All these stands, uh, they are predominantly Muslim parts of Russia. And uh, we are reaching them with the gospel. It's very unique because Russia is pr 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 primarily it's an Orthodox country. But in this area, you, there's some statistics about this country, Tatarstan and Kartostan. Uh, Russia has 185, no, no, back, uh, 185 ethnic, ethnic groups. So it's different people groups like Jews, uh, Russians, Ukrainians, Tatars, Bashkirs, different people groups. And uh, in this place where we are, Right now, Tatars 5.3 million people, unreached people groups. Bashkirs 1.6 groups. It's the biggest unreached people groups in Russia. City of Rufa itself, just 1.2 million people. And they have in this city at least five unreached people groups. Bashkirs, Tatars, Mari, Udmur, Chuvash. It's in five different languages. It's completely different people groups. And none of them has their national church. And our prayer that uh, local brothers invite us, Russian church invite us to come and go with them alongside to help them start national church. This on, on this picture you can see on the, on the left it's a Bashkirs and then Tatars, Mari and Kukur. It's a different people groups and they have different customs, different language, different mindset. Some Muslim, some are pagan, uh, but none of them has um, access to the gospel, to the Bible. God, uh, this is uh, their national hero, Salavat Yulai. Yeah. It's in the city of Ufa, you can see sitting on the back. It's a, uh, they, they, they like horses, they like, you know. And God gave a miracle. Last year, I mean, uh, 2015, first time in history, New Testament in Zil. It's called in Zil, it's a New Testament in uh, Bashkir language was released. Just New Testament. And on the right, you can see a uh, temple. First time in 2016 was released. Bible in Tatar language. 
So Pashtus and Tatar has now access to New Testament and Old Testament. And uh, now it's a time to go and reach them with the gospel preacher. So we moved uh, last fall, this us with my, uh, my wife, at the church. It's called a House of Prayer for All Nations. It's a, it's a city of 1.2 million people. And we, it's, it's me and the UCC, these guys, who was 20 years ago, 20 years ago, they got saved, it was boys in my youth group. And now there are pastors who invite us to hold with them to strategically plan and how to reach this uh, nation, uh, these small ethnic groups with the gospel. That's why we're going back to Russia. This May, uh, we're going back. And on this picture, you can see Tatars in the dark, um, dark, and uh, green, it's a Bashkirs, it's a ethnic groups. And these guys are believers. We had the first, this fall, we had two conferences, one in Tatarstan, one in Bashkortostan. It's two, like, two states next to each other, where Tatars and Bashkirs live. We had two conferences with them. We have another missionary, a man, who is came from uh, Minnesota, and two, two families of us, we are now working with them. And here on the left, on the left, uh, this guy is Imam, former Imam or uh, former uh, Mullah. It's a it's a priest in uh, in a, um, Islamic religion. Yes, and he became believer just reading New Testament in Gil. He was reading this and he became believer. Now he he was um, uh, the people. He was started to preach in his mosque. He was started to tell about Jesus for three years. He never been to any uh, evangelical church, but he was reading. And he realized he's God, he's son of God, and he's the one who died for my sins. And he began to preach how he understand, that's how he was preaching to them. And, uh, and people became a little bit upset because he was telling too much about Jesus, not enough about Muhammad. And he switched, you know, and he began to tell about Jesus to people. Some people liked, but most people. Uh, began to persecute him and uh, they want to kill him. So government came and tell him to move right away. So he moved to a different place and now he is in different location, uh, like undercover. You know, it need to be very wisely how to be reaching Muslims with a, with, a, uh, with a gospel. It's not easy. It's not open evangelism. It's not anymore. But it's one on one discipleship and one on one testimony. We cannot go and preach openly gospel, but we can go and tell. Uh, one on one. How God changed my life. If God changed my life, He can change your life. And blood of Jesus is shed for my sins. So it's wash my sins and can wash your sins. That's a gospel, simple gospel. Uh, he is the Son of God. He is God Himself who came in flesh. That's a gospel which we are bringing to these people. And uh, there is radical Islam is growing in Russia in, in these uh, republics because they want to say, if you're Tatar, you're Muslim. You need to be real Muslim, and we, we will teach you how to be a real Muslim. That's how they, their missionaries come in and uh, preach. We need to bring diff different, uh, we need to bring gospel of love, forgiveness. Yeah. It's, it's a different concept. There is no love in Islam. It's only obedience, obedience, and nothing else. And uh, God is uh, working over there, so we came to the same church, and uh, we collect this, uh, get together with these young people groups, we are singing together, I like choir, so I like choir with them, and we will be traveling around and also reaching with the gospel. Please pray for us as we go back to Russia this uh, in this May. Uh, Sakharov is our home base, and but uh, we are here uh, uh, for another couple months to raise support and go back full time, and we will be there for two years again. So two years in Russia, couple years in America. And we will be traveling around also to raise support and tell people what God is doing. And if you can pray for us, we have over there on the back uh, our brochure and, and a picture. You can take this picture with you and pray for us as we go back to Russia this fall, uh, this uh, May for two years. Yes. Amen. In Russia? Only sat satellite, yes. People who have satellite can, can have access, yes. I don't know. Yeah, similar to TBN, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's very few people, not That's everybody exactly knows. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, there we have uh, on the back uh, some uh, pictures and uh, brochure newsletter can take pray for us as uh, we go back to Russia. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. 
God is good, amen. Uh, we pray and we ask the Lord to make us a missions-minded church. Now we work on home missions. We right here in Del Paso Heights and Mrs. Sister Mary Watts has TLC Soup Kitchen and that's constantly giving to the people in this community. And we have students at Sacramento State University and at Fresno State University that are doing home missions. But we also need to do foreign missions because God says go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. And so if we partner with these missionaries who so much need our support and where God is moving, the word that says, lay not up treasures on earth where the moth eats and the rust rots, but lay up your treasures in heaven, amen? amen. Hallelujah. We just finished up the book of Revelation and Bible study on Wednesday, and uh, we were really awestruck. Uh, Pastor Fond and I were talking about it on our way, driving back and forth. When we thought about the new Jerusalem, Okay, and when New Jerusalem comes on the refer on the renewed earth, and the sign now we know it was set with the Jerusalem in it now geographically, but fifteen hundred miles cubed, huge, huge. God has prepared a place for us, and it's fifteen hundred miles wide. <laughs> And wide and tall and across and, and and it's clear and it says each of the gates is made out of one single pearl. Can you imagine a pearl? Yeah. Fifteen hundred miles high up into the sky. Woo! Lay up your treasures in heaven. Amen. Yeah. Your eternal reward. It says we're gonna rule and reign with Christ. We have a thousand year reign. And uh, we want to be faithful. You know, we're going to be faithful. We never know when, our, when we're going to meet our maker. And we, you know, there's the, the judgment seat. We don't have to go to the white throne judgment. But we will go to the judgment seat of Christ where our works are a measure. will either they'll burn up because they were for our own selfish glory or they will give us an eternal reward. Amen? Amen. So don't you want to receive your eternal reward and to be able to be found faithful over what he put in your hands so that he can trust you to do to put more in your hands. Amen? For all of eternity, not just in this 70, 80, 90, 100 years that we are even so blessed to have that. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Pastor David, we, we will have you back to come and preach for us. And uh, we're going to bring you before our missions uh, board and see how we can help on a regular basis. So we'll have you back and we'll See, and your, your lovely wife, what is her name? Alicia. Alicia? Alicia, welcome, welcome. Do you sing? I bet you sing. No. <laughs> he said, yeah, she sings like a canary. Praise <laughs> God. Well, welcome very much. We're so glad to have you with us today. It's such a blessing. God was so good. Thank you. Hallelujah. Wow, praise God. That was a good text I received. Um, God is so good. <laughs> God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Do you know the Spanish? El Señor es bueno. El Señor es bueno. El Señor es bueno, el Señor es bueno para mí. Amen. He's good, eh? Amen. We can sing it in German. A country Deutsch machen mit mir, ja. Ja. Ah, Gott ist gut. Bring us English. Ah, Gott ist gut. Ah, Gott ist gut. Er ist gut. Nach mir, I believe. I haven't thought out the sentence structure on that one, but it's something close to that. My German's rusty. But my Hebrew is going to be better, amen? <laughs> come out on Wednesday. How many, of you, how many of you can't come out on Wednesday? Let me see your hands. Mayor Abel, I know Sylvia has to work. 
If you're able to come out on Wednesday, come out this Wednesday. We're going to start a new study. We have it in our in our, in our beautiful prayer room that Ray and James and a couple of them have helped with, and Pastor Johnny helped with. And so we have it in our prayer room. We have two leaves. We can make the table a lot bigger. We can bring in extra chairs. And uh, and we have a great time of fellowshipping. Amen. We have it at 1.15 p.m. And... Uh, we don't have a Wednesday night study, but if there are a couple people that would like to have a Wednesday night study or another weeknight study, I'm willing to teach the same study in the evening. Okay? Even if it's on the night on our Samoan church, if using our church, we can meet in my office in the prayer room, and uh, we can we can have a study there too. So, Okay, so it's, it's going to be really good. It's on the feasts of the Lord. God is revealing to his body the way he always desired to be worshipped. In Ephesians chapter 2, he said that he took, tore down the middle wall of partition, which once divided Jew and Gentile, and out of the two he has made one new band. And so we're grafted into the true vine. Well, Hitler knew that. Adolf Hitler knew that when he was inspired by Satan, he knew that if he went after the root, the true vine, if he went after the original, he went out, he went out, cut out the root, the branches would fall. So if you cut out the Jewish people, the foundation of our faith, then the Christians have no, no grounding. Amen? <coughs> Since Jesus said that he is the rock, we have grounding on him. And he said that it's our job even to make the Jewish unbelievers jealous and envious of our relationship. And I've seen that firsthand. When we went into the synagogue and we had a solidarity meeting and we brought dancers and singers and we were singing all Old Testament songs and the, the Jewish people said, what is that? And they said, it's worship. It, they said, we love it. We said, well, we got it from you. It came from the Old Testament. And it said, we want it back. And we said, hallelujah. You know, hallelujah. We provoked them to jealousy. And that is what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to love them with the love of Jesus, not hate on them like they did during the Crusades. <coughs> you know what? Guess what? It's okay to apologize for the Christian faith, the things that people did that were ignorant. It's okay to say killing Jews was not pleasing to Jesus. That was not Jesus. That was Satan, you know? And we're sorry people did that in the name of Christianity. We don't believe that way. You know that I've seen a lot of Jewish people really healed because they've been persecuted their whole life. And if we reach out to them in love... That are open to receive the fellowship of our Lord. Amen. Well, with that, we go through the Parsha um, with our, our Jewish brothers and sisters once a year, and we also correlate New Testament scriptures. So, Pastor Fon will come and bring us the summary of this week's Parsha. Both means come. January 29th. Through February the 4th, 2017. The Torah, Exodus 10, 1 to Exodus 13, 16. The prophets, Jeremiah 46, 13 through 28. And the gospel, Mark 3, 7 through 19. Right. Are those still in the bulletin, Pastor? No. Maybe you want to write those references down because you'll want to be studying the whole scriptures through the week. So, uh, our thought for the week is no uncircumcised person. The rituals of the Passover Seder and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread are designed to inspire curiosity. The children at the table observing the unusual rites and foods are supposed to be inspired to ask, why is this night different from all other nights? All right, all right. The purpose of Passover is to transmit faith to the next generation. Yeah, right. But if a stranger sojourns with you and celebrates the Passover to the Lord, let 
all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near to celebrate it, and he shall be like a native of the land. But no uncircumcised person may eat of it. Exodus 12, 48. The Torah clearly states that no uncircumcised person may eat of the Passover. What is more, it says that if a stranger, i.e. a Gentile, wants to celebrate the Passover, he has to be circumcised first. So how can a Gentile keep a Passover Seder? When we speak of Passover, we generally mean the entire feast of unleavened bread. In the Torah, the term Passover, Pesach, applies only to the sacrifice of the Passover lamb and its consumption. Exodus 12, 48 prohibits an uncircumcised person from making a Passover sacrifice and eating a Passover lamb. The New American Standard Version makes it sound like an uncircumcised person is prohibited from celebrating Passover in general. But the Hebrew makes it clear that such a person is only prohibited from sacrificing the lamb. This law applies both to both Jews and Gentiles. The same law shall apply to the native as to the stranger who sojourns among you. Exodus 12, 49. An uncircumcised Jew and an uncircumcised Gentile are both forbidden from sacrificing or eating a Passover lamb. The Torah does not forbid them from keeping the feast of unleavened bread, though. The law leaves them free to participate in the Seder meal and keep the seven days of unleavened bread. In the days of the apostles, the Gentile believers were free to remain uncircumcised. But if they wanted to make a Passover sacrifice, they would have been required to first undergo circumcision and conversion. For most Gentile believers, this was a non-issue. They lived far from Jerusalem. Neither they nor the Jewish community around, around them had access to the temple or sacrifices. Therefore, they kept the Passover, the Seder, and the seven days of unleavened bread, like the rest of diaspora Judaism, without a lamb. The only thing prohibited for them was the sacrificial lamb itself. This opinion may be derived from rabbinic sources as well. According to the Talmud in B, Pesach 96, an uncircumcised non-Jew is allowed to keep the Seder and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread only regarding the actual lamb sacrifice is he banned. In today's world, the entire question is moot. Without a temple, there can be no such thing as a real Passover lamb sacrifice. That is why lamb is no longer supposed to be served at the Passover Seder meal. This means that uncircumcised believers, whether they are Jews, Jewish, or Gentile, are welcome at the Seder table. They should partake of the matzah, the bitter herbs, the four cups, and the seven days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread with a glad heart. We can all share in and rejoice in our common Passover lamb, Yeshua. Amen. Praise God. You know, it gets a little legalistic, and we're not legalistic. Basically, what this was saying was Yeshua freed us from the illegalism. Amen. That he was and is the Passover lamb, amen? Yes. By the way, what did we learn this uh, this uh, Advent season? We learned that Christ was really born on Sukkot, right? The Feast of Tabernacles. God with us, Emmanuel. We also learned that John the Baptist, this was important, he was born on Pesach, or Passover, which was when the highest uh, privilege for a son to be a prophet to be born on Pesach, uh, and John the Baptist, as Christ told us, there was no greater prophet before him in a sense. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. 
We know that Jesus is the Passover lamb. You know, uh, think about this. The poor at Passover, at Passover, there was a community lamb that was sacrificed for the very poorest people. And they could not afford their own lamb. And it was usually waited till the very last, the end of the day, to sacrifice this because they didn't make any money off of it. You know, they had become kind of greedy in the temple. And so, right before, they would always wait until the very, very, very end of the day to sacrifice that one so they could get all the paying people first. And then they would do the very last one. Well, when they would sacrifice the final lamb, the, the, the community lamb, the high priest would say, or the priest doing the sacrifice would say, it is finished. And what happened when Jesus died on the cross? What did he say? It is finished. And then guess what happened? All of a sudden, it became dark. And they could not sacrifice any more lambs that day because they were not allowed to sacrifice after sundown. So he was, God was sending a sign from heaven. This is my son, the Passover lamb. No other sacrifice is needed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor John, do you have a song for us today? Let's welcome Pastor Johnny as he comes and brings his special music.
Still away, still away, still away to Jesus. Still away, still away home. Ain't got long to stay. Jacob right now, he'll be back in the house of God. Amen. Amen. 
God is able, amen? He's a good kid and he loves God. He's just, he's just going a different path right now. But our God is able, able, able. Yeah. I want to go to uh, something that was not in uh, my PowerPoint today real quick. I want to go to John chapter 8. I'll just read it for you. Uh, and it was 842, I believe. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, Jesus was at Mount Olives and he was talking to the Pharisees, you know, and we know the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they were supposed to be the righteous, the religious leaders, but they were not righteous, nor were they uh, leaders that God wanted them to be. And, and if we back up to verse 21, uh, 41, uh, or we'll go back to 40, and Jesus uh, is telling them this, but now you are seeking to kill me. A man who has told you the truth, which is, I heard from God. This Abraham did not do. Because they were saying they were the children of Abraham. You are doing the deeds of your father. Now, this is a pretty harsh word. How would you like for Jesus to tell you, you are doing the deeds of your father and continue? And they said to him, we were born as, we were not born as illegitimate children. We have one father. God himself. Yeah. Yeshua said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. Amen. For from God I came, and now I am here. For I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why don't you understand my speech? Yeah. Because you're not able to hear my word. You are of your father the devil. Hallelujah. And you what to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks lies, he is just being himself, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop right there. I want to remind you that every lie comes from the pit of hell. Amen. And today's message is going to open up and it might look like it's a little bit flowery or secular, but it's not. Hallelujah. I'm trying to illustrate a point right here. How many of you have ever felt rejection? Has ever, anybody ever felt rejection? Have you ever felt less than? Have you ever been beaten down? Have you ever thought that you're just not good enough? No matter how good you are, you're not good enough. Have you felt any of those things? Well, first of all, I'm here to tell you today, right off the top, if you hear nothing else, those are lies from the pit of hell. Every negative thing about you comes from Satan. And I do not want you to believe him or to play those tapes in your head anymore. He comes after every one of us with the same lies. But he's a liar. He's the father of lies. And he was a bit of father of lies. And you are good enough. You know why? Because you are righteous. Amen. Why are you righteous? Not because you're perfect, but you've been redeemed. Hallelujah. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus paid the price. He was good enough. And since He paid the price for your sins and my sins, we are good enough. Amen. Hallelujah. We're good enough. In fact, we're a kingdom of priests. That's what God says. And we're not we're not called after the order of the Levitical priests. But we are called after the order that Christ is called after. Melchizedek, the high priest. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah! Praise God! We are not to be ashamed of who we are. And listen to this. Where do you get your self-worth from? Who you are in Christ. Amen. Who you are in Christ. You know, we all like to look nice, but if I get my self-worth 
from what I see in the mirror, you know, there's always going to be something I'm going to pick apart, man. If I review my self worth by how much money is in my bank, I, there are going to be times in my life where I'm not going to feel worth anything. Because my bank sometimes gets on the negative side. Hallelujah. Not anymore that I'm walking into a new season in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we sow into the ministry. We cast our bread upon the water. And we trust God to bring it back to us. Amen. And the word of God says that I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Amen. Hallelujah. So he is faithful. So even when it seems like we're in lack, we're not in lack. Because our father owns a cat on a thousand hills. And he is sure to take care of every one of our needs. He was mindful this morning. He knew that Brother Tola wasn't going to be able to show up and play the piano for us. So guess what he did? He sent Pastor David by to play for our worship. He is mindful of every single thing. And you know what was nice was when Pastor David was here, he got to play with the, the Samoans when they were practicing. So it wasn't brand new. They, he could just jump right in there. God orders the steps of the righteous. Amen. You never know. You never know. But Romans 8, 28 tells us that all things, say all, all, all things work together for good. For who? For everybody? No. But for who? For those who what? Love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. I liked what my son Matt said last, last week. He said, when you come to salvation, you know, it's a, it, he, he broke down into to three steps. And the first step was Jesus was at the door knocking. And now you let him in, you know. But he said, the second step is you have to die to yourself. Amen. You got to die. Boy, I never thought I'd get to quote my son. That's great. You get to die to yourself. Amen. You have to you all the hopes and dreams that you had before you were saved. You die to. Yeah, yeah. And you let God give you new hopes and new dreams. Amen? Yeah. And that way he snows the desires of our heart because he gives them to us. He puts his desires inside of us. Amen? Yeah. Ooh, you know, I've been praying. I've been asking the Lord for many years if he would like me to have a wife to send me a wife. But, you know, uh, another brother said to me, but what if, what if, you had to choose the deeper things of the Lord and when you could walk into a stadium or a place or a hospital and you can just heal everybody that's sick through the power of the Holy Spirit because you spent time with them. What would you rather have? That's a, that's a tough question. That's a tough question. Right? But I said, you know what? I'm with his, his will. He knows what's best for me. He knows whether I need a wife or whether... I need to spend time in my prayer closet with the Holy Spirit. And I want a wife, but praise God, I'm going to trust Him. Amen? As I trust Him, He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. He is going to bring the right person, or He's going to cause my life to work out the way He chooses for it to. And it's all going to be for His good. Amen? Hallelujah. God is so good. I'm entitled this this uh, this morning's lesson. Who's the reject? Ask you ever felt rejected. But who's the reject? Oh, by the way, before I go any further, and this is a family church, I have to find out where's Gloria today. I was expecting her. She said, "Is she okay?" No, she's been uh, this weekend with her son over in Okay, good. All right, Prince, come around this. Way. I stop the sermon to ask about her. <laughs> I expected to see her last week, and then I'm all wrapped up to see her today. Tomorrow I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> Put it on thick, all right? Spread it on both sides. All right, but I love her. I love your daughter. Praise God. Amen. Who's the reject? We have all felt the sting of rejection. We covered that at the very beginning. I want you to listen to some of the following rejection lines and think about how you would have responded if you were that person. All right, now. Now, the devil is the father of lies. Let's look at the first one. You are fired. 
You are unfit for television. You know who was told that? Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> you might not agree with her views, but she certainly wasn't unfit for television. She was one of the biggest hits television ever knew. Amen. Pray for Oprah. Pray that she comes back to the God of her father. Pray that she comes back to Jesus and that she really gets right. Pray for her. Amen. Amen. Let's start hating. Let's pray. Let's put our love on her. Let's pray that the Holy Spirit will draw her. She's a person too. She needs to go to eternity and be with Jesus. He said, not one of mine are lost. Yeah. Yeah. And she was one of his. She accepted Jesus Christ in Sunday school in a little Baptist church. I believe it was in Mississippi, somewhere down right. south. Yeah. And she's one of his. He comes after the lost sheep. So pray for her. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can't act, can't sing, slightly bald, can dance a little. <laughs> Fred Astaire! <laughs> People are so wrong! But who thought the father of lies? The devil. The rest of your Fred Astaire, however, in 76 years, from 1904 to 1981, Fred Astaire made 31 musical films and several award winning television specials. He was named by the fifth greatest mouth star of all time by the American Film Institute and was best known as a dancing partner and on screen romantic interest of Ginger Rogers, with whom he co starred in a series of 10 Hollywood musicals, which transformed the genre. Why don't you stop wasting people's time and go out and become a dishwasher or something? Who was told that? Sidney Poitier. <laughs> he went on to win an Oscar for Lilies of the Field in 1964, 1967. He was super successful. And guess who's coming to dinner? All right. You ain't going nowhere, son. You ought to go back to driving a truck. Who do you think was told that? Elvis Presley. <laughs> Yet Elvis became an American singer and would later be known as one of the most significant cultural icons. Think of it one more time, Bobby. His picture should be there. Uh, cultural icons of the 20th century. He is also referred to as the king of rock and roll, or simply the king. We have a whole gospel album for, for uh, Elvis Presley. Only God knows. Amen. Only God knows. Let's hope and pray that the Holy Spirit called him when he was laying there dying, you know? He knew Jesus at one time, you know? Let's not be so judgmental. Let's pray for these people. Uh, let's pray for their families, especially the living. This uh, can't change what's already been done. He was cut from his high school basketball team for lack of skill. So he went home and cried in the privacy of his bedroom. This did not stop him from playing the game of basketball. Who is it? Michael Jordan! <laughs> from my hometown, Chicago, who would later become an American former professional basketball player who played 15 seasons in National Basketball Association for the Chicago Bulls. We had a great big, my brother had a great big Bulls, a red sweater he would wear to church. I don't know if, if you remember Francis, the lady from the fourplexes. She would, she would start hitting them and just say, get out of here, devil, get out of here, devil, because they had devil horns, you know, the bull had horns. But they were the biggest team of basketball for many years uh, uh, for the Chicago Bulls. He was also acclaimed on the NBA website and it states he was the greatest basketball player of all time and one of the, was one of the most effective marketed athletes in his generation who has popularized NBA around the world. And that he's a, you know my brother who is involved in foreign trade and God has sent him to China. Uh, He's taken the NBA stars, and they all want to know about Michael Jordan, even today. And he's taken NBA stars through China to do uh, exhibitions and what have you. Uh, but men lie. When people try to get you down and reject you, you don't have to receive that. Because you are a child of the Most High God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Say, I can. I do, all do all things through Christ, Christ. who Christ. strengthens me. Do you know where that's found at? No, that's not it. Oh, it's it's 4, 14. 14. Philippians 4.14. Who said it first? 
All right, there we go. You get a brownie or something. I'm not giving my donut. I'm waiting for my fast is over. Hallelujah. It's going. Let's look at the scripture. Now, see, isn't it something that God uses, that the devil uses rejection as a way to try to get God's people down all the time? But look where we see rejection the most in scripture. The Vicus 2643. But the land will be deserted by them and will enjoy its Shabbat while it lies desolate without them. And they will accept the punishment of their iniquity because they what? Rejected my ordinances and their soul abhorred my statutes. God's people rejected his ordinances. Numbers 11 20. But for an entire month until it is coming out of your nostrils and it becomes loathsome for you, for you went rejected Adonai who is among you, and you wailed to his face saying, Why did we ever leave Egypt? Right. What were they crying about? The manna. What was the manna? Bread from heaven. Right, it was it was Yeshua taking care of their needs every day, enough for that day. On Shabbat, enough for Shabbat. It was only good for one day or for the, the second day on Shabbat, or it would spoil. It was the perfect nutrient, the perfect nourishment. No other time in history has the bread of heaven fallen to earth to feed mankind physically. It was a physical manifestation of Jesus providing our every need. But they rejected it. They said, we want meat. All right. So they got quails. And boy, did they get quails. So it was coming out of their nostrils. All right. Rejection. Man rejecting God. Amen. Over and over and over. First Samuel 8, 7. Then Adonai said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you. Rather, they have je rejected me from being king over them. Think about that. This nation, as long as they were in right standing with God, it didn't matter what nation they went up against. They won every single battle. Every need was taken care of. God himself was their king. Everyone in the free world, the, the civilized world, feared the children of Israel because they feared their God. Amen. There was story after story after story about how he protected them supernaturally. The walls of Jericho fell. He opened the eyes of the prophets and they saw, they saw the angel go in and slaughter their enemies for them. He confounded their enemies time and time again, made them turn on each other and kill each other time and time again because God was their king. They were safe. Hallelujah. But they didn't want God for a king. They rejected him. They wanted to be just like everyone else. And so they found the tallest, most handsome ones that that's going to be our king. And they had Saul. We all know where that took them. Two. Isaiah 53 3. Oh, and by the way, why did Saul have the kingdom pour from him? Because he rejected God's instructions. He wanted to do it man's way. Man, whenever they would defeat another country, they would bring the kings and princes back to their and their good stuff home to their their castle and they would start treating their defeated king like family and then they would intermarry with them and strengthen their alliances with their former enemies. It was a way to time. But God said, don't do that. I will protect you. And he wanted them to keep their bloodline pure. Alright. And false you don't know want them I mean any other God before them. Like all the pagans did. But Saul had to do it his own way. And he almost destroyed the people of Israel because it was one of the descendants of the king that he brought back that rose up, and we know him later on as Haman. 
And he had carried that grudge from generation to generation to generation and almost destroyed the people of God. If it were not for Mordecai and Queen Esther, the God raised that. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53 and 3. This is talking the prophecy of the Messiah. So this is talking about Jesus. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows acquainted with grief. One from whom the people hide their faces. He was despised and we did not esteem him. How sad. God of the universe came and dwelt among us in the flesh. Gave every kind of a sign. Every one of the feasts was about Jesus. He literally fulfilled that he was born on the Feast of Tabernacles. He was circumcised on the day of the covenant. What a circumcision. God's covenant to redeem mankind. And introduced to the world as Messiah on Sinkat Torah. The only day God commanded his people, they could not be sad. Why? Because the Savior of the world was going to be introduced on Sinkat Torah. <laughs> but they rejected him. All right. They despised him. I read in John when he told the Pharisees, he told them they were of the, their father, the devil. Jeremiah 619, Hear, O earth, see how I bring disaster on this people, fruit of their skins, for they did not listen to my words and rejected my Torah. You know what? It is a serious thing to take lightly the commandments of the Lord. I'm all about grace. I need it more than anybody, amen? I need grace. As much as you do. I need the blood of Jesus. You hear me? I pray with the blood of Jesus. Not that I'm walking or living in sin, but I'm a man. So I know I'm not perfect. And I know that between Sunday to Sunday, there's going to be a thought, a deed, or an action that is not pure before the Lord. Amen. So I want to make sure I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I don't think I'm going to hell every time I sin, but I want to be in right standing with my Father. I don't want to have the anointing depart from me, amen? Hallelujah. Oh, oh, Rabba, hata, Rabba, Jeremiah 8 9. The wise men will be put to shame, shattered, trapped. Look, they have rejected Adonai's word. So, what wisdom do they have? Right. You know, it comes to mind the other scripture that says, professing themselves to become wise, they became fools. We have a lot of academia like that. You know, I, am, I believe in education. But boy, if you send your children off to college, they better be strong Christians to come out strong Christians. Amen. Because there are so many people that don't believe yes that try to convince them that the, the teachings of their parents are just old-fashioned religious garbage. All right now. But we're going to be in the world, not of it. We don't have to be afraid of that. That you train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. They can go into that university and be a light, like we pray. Let, let, your, let my light shine, amen. What's the light of my Ezekiel 2013, but the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my statutes. They what? Rejected my judgments. Which if a man does, he will live by them. They greatly profaned my Shabbat. Then I resolved to pour out my fury on them in the wilderness to consume them. Matthew 21, 42. Yeshua said to them, have you never read the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected? This has become the chief cornerstone. This came from Adonai and is marvelous in our eyes. Mark 8, 31. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and ruling Kohanim and Torah scholars and be killed and then after three days rising. Romans 11, 1. I say that God has not rejected his people. Has he? May it never be. For I too am Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Did you get it? Who's the reject? God. The Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. God gave the word. Jesus is the word. 
the Holy Spirit gives us the power to overcome or follow the word. But so many people reject it. They want an easier gospel. They preach false things like extreme grace. Live however you want, you're still going to go to heaven. It's not true. We're not perfect. Praise God for the blood of Jesus. But we are to strive to learn the word of God and to follow its teachings. Amen. Amen. I like what Pastor David said when we were talking about a topic. He said, I don't believe in that. I believe in the Bible. Hallelujah. I'm going to agree with you. I believe in the Bible. I see that man's way doesn't work. Doesn't work. But God's way always works. I believe in the Bible. The word of God is true. I have a little sign in my yard that says something like, for 3,500 years, they've been right, and they're still right, the Ten Commandments. Do you know they hung in every courthouse for years and years until some foolish men, professing themselves to become wise, became fools? But it was the foundation of every courthouse, the Ten Commandments. It was the ruling guide for society. But when you take out God, you get everything else. All the demonic garbage, you know? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Although man has rejected God and his holy word throughout history, God has not rejected us, but rather made a way where there was no way. And that's Jesus Christ, you know? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, let's stand. Jesus, there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the Lord, 
We just be healing in Jesus' name. Oh, Satan, you are a liar. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Thank you, Jesus. Bring healing to my brother. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I want more of you, Jesus. Anybody want more of Jesus? Thank you, Lord. This is pretty simple prayer. And then we have one more little video we want to show, and then we'll dismiss. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the freedom for those that are with me at this altar. Thank you, Lord. We want a deeper walk, or we want to know you deeper. We want to know you more. We want to walk closer to you. We want to fall less and walk standing up more. But thank you, Lord, that when we do fall, you lift us up with your righteous right hand. Cause us, Lord, never to keep seeking your face, to we keep seeking your ways and your wills. And I thank you. Thank you. And part of blessing to each one here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, let's just, we're going to have you stand in for him, Leola, because you're a blood sister. And then, Pastor, and then we're going to have you seated. It's just a little short video to show you. Father Lord, as, as Leo is a point of contact for her brother Cleo, Father Lord, we just pray, Lord, we just touch his body, Lord, with your word. Lord, may you heal every disease in his body, Lord. Father, do a miracle work in Cleo's body. He's a faithful servant, Lord. Lord, touch evangelist Cleo, Father. Heal his stomach, Lord. Heal all of the problems in his body. And we thank you now in the name. Lord, heal the relational things as well. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be seated in his presence. And we're going to show you this video and we'll dismiss. Just three minutes. Three minutes video. When people in Russia are getting saved, they're very serious about their faith. If they want to baptize, get baptized right away. Nobody wants it. Summer, winter, they are ready. So this little video about... Отец наш Небесный, сейчас просим Тебя, чтобы Твоя слава и Твое имя было здесь прославлено. Do you believe that Jesus is your Savior and Lord of your life? Yes, I do. Because you believe, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Я крещу тебя во имя Отца и Сына и Святого Духа. Аминь. Дорогой брат Владимир, верующий Мы тебя благодарим за то, что ты Бог нас, который ты Спаситель наш. What are your feelings now after you've been baptized? I cannot even express my feelings. My soul is singing. I have such a joy in Christ. When we just came, I saw the eyes. I started to have second thoughts, and I began to pray. Then I saw how Pastor Sasha went first and started to break the eyes. My second thought disappeared. I went in with the prayer. I'm dying for the sinful life, and I want to serve you, Jesus. I have incredible feelings of joy that will stay with me until my last day. The only thing now is to praise God. 
Dima is a missionary now that goes to different towns and speaks about Jesus. There are millions more in Russia who are like Dima and they are in need of Christ. Praise God, hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Is that awesome? Praise God. Father, I bless you and keep you and I make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And I turn your face toward you and grant you some love. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. The hope of the matter of love the Father has given up to us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God and daughters. That we should be called the sons of God. And we are good with God and be blessed in his holy name. Amen.